Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Miss Terry here. Um, so in this video, I wanted to answer another question from one of my site members. And this question was really common. Um, it is doing the work. When spiritual people say, oh, you got to do your work. Or you got to, you got to do you got to do your work like and people who haven't started their spiritual journey they're like do the work what does that mean what does it mean to do your work on your spiritual journey so that's what we're going to talk about now the first thing that you really need to recognize when you're starting your spiritual journey which I'm going to do a separate video on starting your spiritual journey I believe because it starts different ways for different people but we're talking about people who are like yes I'm on my spiritual journey yes I need to do the work one of the main things about doing the work is staying honest with yourself number one what is your goal what's the objective what are you trying to accomplish um, are you trying to get out of chaos and conflict and turmoil like what drove you to find your spiritual path that you're trying to get away from um, what is it that you're denying about yourself like what is it that you're not accepting about yourself what is it that what's your connection with source whatever your source may be I never judge anybody's religion because I'm a person who feels like there are many paths to God like God is you know God is bigger than universal so why would there only be one way like when people get stuck on Oh no, Christian's the best way. Oh, Jehovah Witness is the best way. Oh no, you got to be a Baptist or a Methodist or you got to be a non-denominational is the way to go. Or you know what? I'm going to take the road and be atheist. Whatever your path is, it's unique and individual. Like there are many paths to God. So what's what's your claim to fame? Like what is it that you're declaring? What is it that you want to learn about? What is it that you want to connect to? one of the things that happens is a lot of times when you're on your spiritual journey you may change and that's okay um, if you change paths because you might start out as one thing and then end up some realizing that something else brings you closer to the divine than than another thing which is okay um, speaking in general terms however when it comes to doing the work on your spiritual journey um, are you staying honest are you caring for yourself are you doing your part for whatever part of humanity that is an interest to you are you seeking better and the reason why that's important is because lower vibrations and lower energies can keep you in such a low place that is where a lot of the depression, heartache, and pain live. Um, sometimes depression, they say, is unexpression, meaning where you can't express yourself, you're not connected to source, you're not tapped into your creativity. Um, one second. You're not tapped into your creativity. You are not doing things that make you joyful and happy. You're actually stuck on the other side. Now, there is a shadow side of everyone where sometimes you have to work on shadow side energies. Shadow side may be the part of yourself that talks negative to yourself, the part of yourself that is a Debbie Downer, the part of yourself that wants to stay in bed hiding under the covers, the part of yourself that's very judgmental, um, the part of yourself that keeps you wanting to be isolated not in a good way like oh me time me time with me but in the way that it's like we're about to lose everything because we won't come out the house side so when you're on your journey you will work with your shadow side at times and then you will work with the lighter side of yourself in the process of you finding enlightenment and when, when I say finding enlightenment it doesn't mean that Oh, I'm about to ascend like Buddha did, or I'm going to be like Dr. Yusui who sat on a mountain for 40 days fasting and reached enlightenment 
it's not even that. When we put it in every day, 2020, we're here on this planet. It is, what can I do to stay at a level to where I am not vibrating to where I feel like I want to kill myself? Like, you literally, being on earth is not easy. But having these physical bodies is a blessing. If you knew how many spirits were waiting to take your body, if you knew how many spirits didn't want to go into the light, um, didn't want to cross over, they're called earthbound spirits, spirits that don't want to leave. So it is valuable to have a body. In that, you got to protect your body. Um, one way that people get lost is, let's say you're drinking. It's one thing to socially drink, have a great time or whatever. But when you're drinking to the point of where you black out, a lot of times when you actually black out, you have surrendered control of your body. Earthbound spirits who like to drink, who don't want to go over to the other side, hanging around you, decide, oh, I'm going to slip in. I'm going to just slip in for a few minutes. So now you got earthbound who has slipped into you and now you wake up the next day. Everybody's like, yeah, you got really crazy at the party. You don't know what they're talking about. Oh, yeah, I never saw you do that before. How would you learn to do that? And you were like, I don't even get it. It's not even a memory. Why is it not a memory? Because you weren't there. You were unconscious. So anytime you leave your body unconscious, you're susceptible to earthbound walk-ins. I know it sounds creepy, I know it sounds weird, but a lot of times when people go into the hospital and they come out with a total different personality or they have a surgery and they just don't seem like themselves anymore, sometimes things attach, excuse me, sometimes things attach. Nobody wants to talk about this kind of stuff. Why? We don't talk about this kind of stuff in high school, we don't talk about this kind of stuff in college. It's only the community that's like the woo-woo community, the spiritual community, who even gives you a place that you can contemplate and talk about the things of the universe that people don't talk about because they're just in the rat race. They're in the society race. They're just trying to make it paycheck to paycheck day to day. But there are a lot of other factors that are working while you're doing your day to day on earth. So part of your spiritual work is staying aware. Um, the conscious people now are like, stay woke. You know, Childish Gambino has that song, stay woke. Or, no, what is it called? It's called Redbone. But in the song, it's like, stay woke. You know, and the conscious, the co other conscious people are running around. Yeah, y'all got to pay attention and see what's going on on the grid. You know, and they be like, just paying attention to what's going on on the grid. And you got to pay attention. You got to see what the man is trying to do and all. So, that, so this is like a whole different woke woke, but it's almost like finding your way, finding your personal way on your personal journey and keeping yourself safe while you do it. Um, it's a lot of self-care. It is a lot of relinquishing any unforgiveness that you have in your heart. Letting go of burdens that keep you heavy. Um, letting go of traumas and things that might have happened in your past that you weren't able to deal with when you were younger. That's part of the work because those things make you who you are. Um, a lot of times when people are looking for love in a relationship and they keep attracting the same type of partner, that's a time when you need to do some work on yourself so that you can attract a better partner. Sometimes you don't even know what level you're at until you see it reflected back by your partner. So if you think you a 10 and your partner's a 5 and you feel like, oh, why do they keep bringing me down? Like they're getting on my nerves, like they are bringing me down. We supposed to be ride or die, or you supposed to be holding me down, not holding me back. Like you're holding me back. Okay, so if you're really a ten, why are you messing with this five? Why don't you get a ten? Get a ten, right? It takes work to get a ten. Because sometimes 
the five in the ten wants their ego stroke, and fives may be a better ego stroker than another ten would be. So you really got to look at where you are and look at what you're reflecting. Because maybe you think you're a ten, but you're just a five too. So if you really want a ten, there's some work to do, which is working on yourself. Releasing traumas, releasing unforgiveness, releasing anything that's keeping you burdened, releasing any pain, releasing any bad habits, releasing procrastination. Staying true to who you are, learning who you are to stay true to. Discovering your true real self, discovering your higher self, making contact with your angels and your guardians, spirit guides. Making sure you don't have any earthbound attachments or things that are hindering you that aren't even your fault. So a lot goes into it, but it's very specific. Each person's journey is unique. Um, you may be in the same like type of trends and type of styles with people, um, or you may have a certain interests that are the same as people, but everybody's journey is unique. So if you need help getting on your spiritual journey and finding out exactly where you are, help is available. There's a lot of things that you can read. Um, there's a lot of books. Um, Self-help is like a billion dollar industry. Um, people, you, oh, there's so much information out there. One thing about me is I feel like I'm trusted. I feel like I'm respected. I have been doing spiritual work for the last 10 years. And if I can't help you, I can at least point you in the right direction of another person who is trusted to where you won't be down the wrong path. The reason why I say that is because there are a lot of wrong paths. Um, and it's like, when I say the wrong path, it's not judging a particular path, but some stuff isn't a match for your vibration. And if you get into things that aren't a match for your vibration, it could potentially make things worse for you instead of making them better. So that's why it's important to know who you are, what you're into, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, and just making sure you land in the right place um, while you're on your journey. So that takes time to cultivate trust. It takes time to cultivate um, knowing that you'll be safe. A lot of this starts with what's your spiritual foundation. Like People jump into stuff that they don't have no business jumping into and they don't even have the foundation first. So when I say what's source, do you believe in God? Do you don't believe in God? Do you believe in universe? Do you believe in something else? Do you worship God, God, gods and deities and whatever? What's your anchor? Like what is your, what is the thing that is going to be your thing that is your guiding light, your lighthouse? through all of it, through the storm. It's my personal belief that God allows us these different tools to experiment and to learn and to grow from. But you got to know who God is. You got to build that relationship. Whether you call it Christian or you call it whatever. Whatever you call it. It's not about the label. It's about the connection to source. The, the most high, the divine. You see, labels, names, God, goddess, the creator, Jehovah, Allah, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's building that relationship and then going from there. So if you need help on your spiritual journey, you want to know what is your specific work, you can get a read in. Figure out what your specific work. Fill out where you figure out where you are in this particular process. What you need to do. Uh, helps available. Visit the website. Book a reading. Um, especially if you're curious, and especially if you found yourself on this video, there's help. There's help for you. And it may not be as crazy and challenging as you think it is, but we won't know until we find out for you specifically. So I just wanted to give people an overview because a lot of times people were like, what's the work? What's the work? It's a lot, but it, it's so worth it. That peace of mind you get, that confidence you get from knowing exactly who you are, 
it's amazing I would not trade it I would not trade my spiritual journey for anything and I feel like that's why I can help people on their journey because I've been on this journey a long time and I had people who helped me all along the way I did fall into pitfalls and all kind of stuff happen but the lessons are so invaluable as you're growing up as you becoming an adult I feel like that's how you how you get to be a wise woman or a wise man the things that you have learned in life so like I said get help if you need help I'm here for you guys you can book online on the website terrybeal.com and I will see you in the next video